Hello and welcome to another Science Man digital lesson. Today we're going to look at an interesting piece of software called Interactive Physics. It's fantastic for physics modeling. Now when you first start uh, playing with this software you might be a little intimidated by the blank screen but if you look over on the left you'll see what looks kind of like a graphics formatting palette. Now if I just take a circle here and uh, make a circle and a rectangle, it looks like I'm drawing inside of a graphics program. Well, that's pretty much true with interactive physics until I hit run. And whoa, there goes my uh, objects. They've uh, fallen away and that kind of shows you the interesting default of interactive physics. It defaults with the gravity on. So let's just anchor that and now we see our ball hitting the, hitting the floor. And what's great about interactive physics is that you can change the parameters of the objects. For instance, I'm going to take this ball and turn it into rubber. And then I'm going to do the same thing with what I've uh, designated as the ground. I'm going to change its elasticity to make it much more elastic. And now when I hit run in this simulation, my ball bounces much higher. And that's the beauty of interactive physics. You can play God and mess around with the parameters of all kinds of objects. You can also do some serious physics because there's tons and tons of measurements that you can apply to all the objects in your simulation. For instance, I'm going to apply a, a y of velocity to this, uh, to this ball. And then when we hit run again, we'll see that the graph uh, accurately tracks the velocity, the y velocity of the circle. So we'll just stop that and reset and as we make changes we can save as we go along, uh, we can delete things, uh, we can add more objects and let's just try something to make this a little bit more complicated. What I'll do is I'll add a rectangle and another rectangle and here's another thing where uh, that makes interactive physics better than a graphics program is you can actually take pieces and you can uh, join them together. And there's a whole bunch of different uh, joints for you to choose. I'm going to choose a rigid joint in this case. We can choose joints that actually move and slide and rotate. But in this case, I'm going to use rigid joints. And now I'm going to use rigid joints to make this, uh, this platform uh, secured to the ground. And now I think I'll grab uh, a spring. And I'm going to attach a spring to the top of my platform. And now I will take a circle, my circle, and attach the spring to the circle. And we'll just set it back in position. Now let's see what happens when it runs. And isn't that beautiful? We've got a uh, bouncing ball on the end of a spring. And that was a really, really simple uh, simulation to build. And again, remember, we've got a huge number of measurements we can apply to these objects. So for instance, if I applied a Y position graph to this circle and then ran my simulation again, I would have a beautiful, look, I've got a beautiful harmonic oscillation graph on my hands. Um, very powerful, very easy to use. So uh, just remember, well, when you get into the software, you can't go wrong by just playing because it's very user friendly. Uh, very intuitive. And just to show you what you can do in the classroom, uh, I've done this with uh, physics students, for, in for instance, uh, asking them to do design momentum simulations. And here we have what a student has built. Uh, they've built a bus and a car and the bus uh, smashes into the car. And you can, you can see, and the nice thing about this is when things happen too quickly, you can adjust uh, the speed of simulations. You can advance them frame by frame and you can do your analysis that way. And you can see this uh, student has made graphs of momentum of every piece of this simulation. So let's, uh, let's look at a couple of others. We've got here a man on the top of a building and you can probably tell what's gonna happen to him. He falls off and has a little collision with a tree. So there's a, these are all student built student build simulations. Um, let's take another look at another one here. Here we've got uh, dun 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 dun. Shark is uh, smashing into a school of fish, and we've got a lot of momentum graphs here. But uh, the theory being that if we added up the momentum, uh, we'd uh, have a conservation of momentum situation. Here we've got a uh, snowman 
and a snowplow. You can just imagine what's going to happen here. So our snowman gets pulverized by a truck. These are, again, these are all student-made uh, simulations. Generally, they're built in about, you know, 40 to, to 60 minutes. And uh, it, it's a wonderful tool uh, for your, for your physics uh, simulation, especially stuff that's difficult uh, to recreate in class. So again, I strongly recommend uh, interactive physics as a, as a solution for your classroom. Uh, it's great simulation software. I give it high, high marks. And if you're interested in it, go to designsimulation.com. Uh, they'll set you up. And uh, thank you very, very much for viewing this uh, interactive physics uh, scienceman.com digital lesson.